making a statement about your life. That and the question of the week on episode number 48 of The Relaxed Mail. Hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail, a podcast that helps men change their relationship with themselves. I am your host, Brian, and I am a men's life and mindset coach who is here to help you understand that you don't have to suffer at your own expense. You can live your dream, and I encourage you to set, then pursue your goals. So join me as I change the mindset and attitudes of men so that they can be the leaders of their families and their destinies. Hey, man. Hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail. All right. So we've got to this week, we're going to be talking about making your life statements, uh, making a, a, a vision statement if you might, is another way to look at it. And uh, it's a really interesting concept to actually have in your life to actually implement something of, of this line because it helps direct you. And we're going to be talking a lot about that here, uh, here soon. But right now I wanted to actually talk to you about uh, the question of the week. And the question of the week uh, this week is actually brought to you by the Brotherhood of Men. Now, this if you're not familiar with what the Brotherhood of Men is, this is a group of men who get together each week at the same time, and they help each other through the different trials and and tribulations and barriers and and brick walls that we come up with and come up against as we're trying to become the best man possible. And if you want to ever be able to succeed, one of the things that you actually uh, – that you actually need is also a part of one of the four pillars of being a relaxed male, and that is community. And the relaxed uh, male has a community called the Brotherhood of Men. These are your, these guys are all committed to making sure that you succeed. And in turn, you become committed to making sure they succeed. And we, as uh, the tide lifts all boats, we, we as a group help each other to overcome those pesky uh, addictions that we may end up having. We may, may be a smoker. You may drink too much, things along those lines. We can, we like to try to help ensure that you get yourself onto a path where you're, you have a, a healthier body. You have uh, your mind is growing and developing even more where you're growing your community. You're active in, in different groups and and you're becoming the best man possible and showing that your son that hey this is what a man is supposed to be like we don't just sit around and do nothing we are always striving to better ourselves and what that's one of the best ways of being able to help your son because when especially if you've not ever made any large changes in your life and you start making changes and things start coming your way then they start looking at it going hey what, 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 wait a minute. What, what, what's Pops doing over there? Why is he, what's he doing throwing a, throwing a big old rock up and down the, the, the yard for? And you go and ask him and you tell him, well, I'm just, I'm getting my, I'm working my upper body out this week. And I, I just wanted to be able to do it and be able to, to hang out here with y'all. And so I found this, uh, you know, 50 pound rock that I'm just going to toss up and down the, uh, up and down the, the yard a couple times. And he's like, oh, wow. And so he eventually he will start grabbing that rock and throwing it around. You know, he may get, do it a couple times and decide, yeah, this isn't for me and, and leave, and leave you. But he sees the actions that you are taking to make yourself better. And that's, and in doing so, you're inspiring him to make himself better. And that's what the brotherhood of men do. Each man is an example of what we can be and that we're, always striving to become the best man. So if you would like to be able to join the brotherhood, please, man, I, I would love for you to go to relaxmail.com forward slash brotherhood, fill out the application down uh, the form down below. I'll get a hold of you and we'll have a discussion and we'll see how well of a fit we, you are for the, uh, for the brotherhood. 
And with that, let's go ahead and let's jump into the question. Now, the question of the week is a if I have anybody who actually sends me a question or a comment or anything like that, I feel needs to be addressed, then I I address it. If you if I don't, then I normally jump over to Quora and I grab one of the questions there and answer them. This week I got how do I get grades good grades with living with a toxic family? My stepdad hates me and is uh always starts yelling at my mom or just in general when it's a uh, lecture or test. Now the person ended up leaving the, uh, the question uh, as a, as an anonymous person. So I can't uh, just describe them, uh, tell whether, you know, it's a guy or a girl, but there's a lot to, un- to, to, un- Unpack here. <laughs> if I can actually talk, my ta- my talking's not working. We're in cold uh, cold weather today, so we're expecting some possible ice over here in, uh, in the world of Oklahoma. And so, uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe the cold is is affecting my my ability to speak. Probably not because I have pro- trouble speaking anyhow. But anyhow, what I, <laughs> what I would. Uh, essentially went through and and started off with was I would first ask started off saying I would first off ask you does your stepdad really really hate you for real does he actually has he actually gone off and said I hate you and all that you are that you represent or are you just reacting to the actions that your stepdad is uh, is portray- putting out, and that that is actually a really important part to remember as as we go on. And you, because you see, hate is a very subjective concept. You see, that's what one of the big problems that the U.S. has as of right now. Everybody is reacting to what they perceive as being hate. You see. Uh, that you've got some groups that are actually screaming and hollering, saying that uh, Facebook hates uh, hates their group, and then you also have people saying, "Well, that that word that you use been using for the past twenty years is now considered a hate word, and you're you you hate on everybody, and because you don't agree with us, you, you you hate us, and we're we're all just reacting to something that is subjective." What one person sees as hate, another person can see as encouragement. And so it, I really have an issue with when places like Facebook, they, uh, try to state that something is, is hate, uh, is hateful or hateful rhetoric or that, uh, what they put, or what they're putting up is, is, you know, fake news, all that type of stuff. That's, very subjective stuff. That's what one person finds as truth. Another person finds as untruth. That's, and truth is nothing more than the, the facts that we agree with. Now, that's one reason why we have courts because they are the final line of what they say is truth and not truth and what, and all those, and what, whether or not those, those true actual facts of the case mount up to a person being a guilty or, or not guilty of whatever perceived crime has been happening. So. The fact that everybody really likes to throw around this word hate, and as this, as the question asker said, uh, stepdad hates me. Well, I really don't think stepdad hates you. Now we can go to the extremes. We, I mean, granted, there are, there are people who, you know, the, the, the step parent may actually have a grudge against, uh, against stepchild. And that's a no fault on the stepchild himself. That is a, a fault on the marrying parent, parent and the marrying step parent to have worked that little, that little kink out before they actually said, I do. So the that fault of that falls onto the parents. But what I, I really have a feeling is happening is with this, uh, with this question is, that the person is coming just by the how it sounds. Like, how can I get good grades? As if he has said, I, there's no way I can get good grades now because I have a toxic family. Well, he's taken all the power away from what he is able to do. And I'm going to assume that this is a dude asking, though it could very easily be a, be a girl. But I'm going to say that this guy has taken any power that he possibly could have over the situation 
and has relinquished it to the person who he has an issue with. He says his dad hates him. Well, first off, if he's doing that, why, if he does hate him, why are you allowing your, that person to have that much power over you? If his dad truly does actually hate him, why would you allow him to have the power to regulate how well your grades, you can get your grades? I would be, you know, if I ended up living with somebody who truly hated me, I would want to make sure that I showed them everything in my nature to make make sure that uh, I shoved it in their face going, you know what? I can make good grades no matter how crappy you treat me. I'm going to get out of this and I'm going to have myself a better life than what you're treating and possibly, hopefully pull my mom along with it. But the reason that uh, I find that interesting is because now, and I reply and I'm reading from the, uh, from my response now is now who is really feeling that hate you are. Why are you feeling hate? That is the question. You are feeling hate because you are reacting to the circumstances that are neutral. And yes, all circumstances are neutral. I can catch people from time to time trying to push back against that particular statement. Not all, everything is neutral. Yes, every circumstance is neutral until you apply a thought to it. And then that thought is only your thought. And so you perceive a, a circumstance to actually be whether it's a positive event or a negative event. Proof uh, of that, 9-11, when the towers fell, most people in the U.S., they thought that was a very bad and negative event. There are there were radical uh, Islamists over in the Middle East who were seen dancing and celebrating the fact that the Twin Towers fell. A, an event is negative or is neutral until you apply a thought to it. So dad may be yelling at him and, and throwing a fit and mom may be stepping in. I, and I'm con- through these different conjectures into, into the, uh, the, into the discussion because who knows? Maybe he snuck out. Maybe he didn't mow the lawn. Maybe he was supposed to, uh, clean the dog poop out of the backyard. You know, there's any, all, uh, any myriad of, of events that could have done that maybe son did not the stepson did not do and the dad is now upset because stepson never never follows uh follows the rules or at least he sees the stepson never follows rules does he no but again that's dad playing the victim you've got a victim playing a victim here or playing against a victim and so dad may be angry and he's trying to pull his power back and Doing so, he's he's yelling and stomping and and making noise, and interrupting son's ability to study. Well, when did it, I, I use the example in here of of showing? First off, I, w- I went through and I explained the the whole path of how from from a circumstance to uh, to an action because. You, if you've heard me talk about it before, you have a circumstance. That circumstance creates a thought. That thought generates your emotion. That emotion then leads to an action, which leads to a response. Or I mean, the, the emotion leads to a to a response, which leads to your action or results. The action then results. I'm getting myself backwards. So anyhow, you have an action, and that goes to your to your results. So what happens? Dad's angry. Dad's yelling. Well, that could be because, you know, son was laying there in bed. He had this, um, was laying around in bed. He had an emotion of being bored. And so while he's emotion, had this, uh, emotion being bored, he decided to, uh, see what, uh, what girlfriend was up to and snuck out and went to the, went to girlfriend's house. Dad caught the fact that uh, son sn- stepson snuck out of the house and started yelling at him because he was yelling at him. Mom stepped in and was trying to protect his son or protect her son. And so then they both go at it. Now, this may have been something that happened on the following day. So all of a sudden, that following day is the night before you're supposed to, he was supposed to have a test. See, there's a lot of little nuances in there where I was like going, yeah, okay, yeah, this is... uh this is definitely a victim because it's always when uh starts yelling every time he has a uh yelling at his mom or at p- other people in general when uh he has a lecture or a test okay so this is that's where i get the get the full sense that he's wanting to try to pull a victim card and 
sorry, people don't respect victims at all. I did lay down one of the hardest questions a person can actually ask themselves when they're looking at instances like this is what part did you have in these circumstances? What part did you actually play? And if he's really honest and owns up to what he's, what he's done, he'll see that, well, I, I snuck out. All right. Well, good. You know, I know how to keep your, keep your dad from yelling at you. Don't sneak out. You know, you can figure these little tidbits and, and nuances out when you start actually taking responsibility for your different actions. And so how do you actually keep, uh, Say he was actually in a very toxic environment. Like, of course, I'm not a fan of the word toxic family, toxic uh, relationship, things like that, because that implies that there are people who are people are walking around and have uh, have fangs and or have uh, have some type of poison oozing out of their skin. And no, they don't. Because, again, you have control of your own emotions and being a people want to try to use a toxic relationship as meaning that they have the power to make you sick change have your uh affect your emotions uh they infect you in uh, or or toxicify how you feel where you don't not, you're not always feeling happy and giddy and well one you're not ever going to always feel happy and giddy you're going to have times where you're not feeling too uh too great you your grandmother died you know you lost your dog things like that you're going to have ups and downs life is 50 50 50 percent pain 50 percent pleasure that's just how life is how you deal with the pain and how you deal with the pleasure is completely up to you so if you if you can take the the events that are happening in your life and whether this these people are you know fully toxic or a, a better way to say that somebody's toxic is to say that they are emotionally immature. And yes, you can have a fifty year old man and he be emotionally immature. So say these in a house in a household where they're the both adults are emotionally immature. Well, that's where knowing the facts of you have control of your emotions. You have control of what you feel. If you don't like what you feel, you can change the means of what you're thinking about that particular event. Well, he's trying to teach me something. You know, he's, he's wanting to make sure that he, that I don't get hurt. You know, you can change how you look at it and ch- look at, now he may be not be responding absolutely appropriately. He may be going overboard. Yeah, maybe you uh were out in the backyard and he wants everybody inside the house and the door's locked by eight o'clock and it's you know, it's summertime, so you don't get in you don't it's still sunny outside for another hour and a half. And so you come in and he throws a fit. Well, that's on him. That's a bit on you because you I mean, you were Outdoors, you broke the, broke the rules, but the way he responds to the fact that you broke the rules is entirely upon him. The same way as the way he reacts to you breaking the rules and how that affects you is entirely upon you. So there's a lot of, of lack of, of responsibility going on. And if you take responsibility for what your actions are, you can also affect, take uh, responsibility for your emotions because, and then you can realize that, Hey, yeah, he's going to yell at me. He's going to gripe, moan. So let's get it done and over with. Cause I got to go, I got to go study. I've got a test tomorrow. And so that's, you can, you can not worry about what a quote unquote toxic family is going to do because one, the family or the relationship itself isn't toxic. And if you take your your own responsibility for your own emotions and your own actions, people can sit there and try to push all your buttons, but they're not going to have any effect on you because you now control your emotions. And with that, we're going to jump over to the main topic. So... All right. So main topic is making a life statement. 
what is a life statement, first off? Well, a life statement is a, a statement that gives you the direction into the best way to use your talents and your core values to help you make the best impact in your world. Best uh, uh, best definition I have been able to think of. And yeah, I wrote that one. I'm quite proud of myself. <laughs> so <laughs> why do we want to have a life statement? Well, a life, a life statement gives you a direction. A lot of times we like to drift through life. And when we're just drifting through life, you have no control over where you go. If you don't control what direction you're going, there's no guarantee you're going to arrive at where you want to be. If I just hopped on a in a dinghy with no paddles and no sail and no t- mean uh, no motor or anything and I just Stuck, sat myself in the middle of the ocean, or say I launched myself from the uh, uh, from the tip of Florida. I was on the tip of Florida. I had my little little ten foot dinghy, and I pushed out into the ocean. And uh, and the as the tide was going out, so it pulled me out to sea. And I'm just sitting there. I might wind up over in Bimini, where I want to go. I might wind up in the South, uh, in South Africa. I might wind up in Antarctica. I might wind up, you know, depending on what current I catch. I mean, I might wind up in, in Norway. I mean, there, you have no control over where you're going. And a life statement is a lot like adding a, a, at least a trawling motor to your life. You can be on a, on an inner tube floating through life. And at least now you have a little trawling motor that you can actually start directing. Now it's not so much. Uh, you might even just say it's. Uh, it's not so much of a rudder because a rudder just affects is what your what your goals are. If I were to look at all the analogy, your goals your, themselves are your rudder. Where where do you want to go in in particular to a particular obstacle? Say you've got a a tree that is fallen over into the river and you're about to hit it. What do you do? Well, you can use a use a paddle as a rudder. Or if you have a rudder, you can use a rudder and steer yourself around, but you still have no control over where you actually want to go. Say maybe you want to go upstream a little bit. Not that you can, but you know, you just maybe you want to go upstream or you want to get over to another place a little faster. Well, you can use this little trawling motor. You can also, but it, this uh, life statement, if you apply everything to it, you can actually, you know, turn that trawling motor into a, to a, a, a speedboat motor. You can really get to the places you want to get to a lot more, a lot faster and a lot more efficiently. So it helps you to steer and, and keep the, keep the course that you want. So if you're all of a sudden you're finding that you're veering off course, you can correct course and get yourself back online, back into integrity. It also allows you to be able to see the 30,000 view, foot view of what your life is as a whole. Where are you in your life? Where are you in your, in the, in the grand scheme of, of what you want to achieve? So having a life statement helps out tremendously and allows you to be able to make bigger splash, a bigger impact on how people see you. When you have that, when you have a life statement, a life mission in your, or not even a life mission, a, a, a life statement, you're, you have this vision of what you want to achieve. And so that life vision and life statement can actually help you to arrange things in a way so that you are able to get to the, the spot in, in life that you want to get to. Now, so how do you actually get or create a life statement? Well, there are actually three main steps that you want to take. You want to find your what you, lay out what your talents are. So you may grab a piece of paper and sit down and what are your talents? And you may be going, well, I don't know what my talents are. Well, you, you do. You may have to start looking a bit and getting a bit real with yourself because, you know, your talents may just be, may have been something that you loved to do when you were a child. What is, and that's a good place to always to look at is between the age of about, you know, about six or seven up to about 15. There's a good little 10 year window right there where you 
are actually who you were actually meant to be. You knew how to comfort a friend. You may may have been someone who always loved grabbing a pencil and start drawing just, you know, anything and everything. Maybe you drew cartoons or maybe you drew fairly accurate uh, representations of what uh, what people around you looked like. You may draw you may have uh, always wanted to have a typewriter and you got a typewriter and you all, for the longest time you bashed uh, bashed away at that typewriter and you wrote, you know, hundreds of little short stories. It may be that you uh liked getting uh, playing in the mud and you would make all these intricate uh towers out of mud or maybe you liked uh like to play in the water and and make streams and so there's a lot of things you can look at and have an idea of what your talents are. Maybe you were very very creative and no matter where you were at or maybe you were very creative when it came to writing or very creative when it came to um listening to people. Maybe it was very creative. You were very um intentional on learning. And there's a, you've, you could see if you sit down and you really needle through your past, you can see your, your talents shine through before the world high school and the world came along and squished all your dreams into a little bitty ball so that you could put it in the back because everybody told you that it was stupid. But in all reality, that dream is what makes you that those hopes, that passion that you had when you were, you know, 11 years old is what really made you come alive. Now, once you've sat down and you may even talk to some people and talk to friends and things like that who are uh who know you fairly well and they may be able to point out to you, dude you've got a talent of finding people who are just on spot they are up and coming you know rising stars you may you may have uh you have this ability to make see have everybody see the bright side of the day you may have this uh, a unique talent of being able to put a smile on anybody who comes across your path no matter, it looks like they're, you know, on their last leg. They've lost their dog and their wife and their, you know, every country store uh, song out there. You come by and all of a sudden they're singing zippity doo dah. Those are your talents. Then if you take those with your core values, which we talked about last week in episode 47 and combine those two together, you can then decide what type of impact you actually want to make in the world. So you can start assembling those and you can have, I want to, through, uh, through positivity, joy, love, and respect, I want to help men achieve the greatest opportunities that they have in their life. You know, something along those lines might be what you end up hammering out and you can start working your talents and your core values and what the, uh, what the actual impact you want to make in your world. And I want to say your world. It may, it's the people around you, those who know you, those who get to know you, all those folks around are the ones who will become a lot more surprised and a lot more. They will be the ones who see that big change that comes into your life. And when they say, when you're, you, one day when you pass, they're all sitting around, they all start saying, well, I remember old John. Boy, he could he could put a smile on your face. He was quick with a joke, and one of the hardest workers I ever knew of. Well, those are things that those are key points that you can actually put inside your life statement. And how does how do all the your talents and your values how do they come together to achieve that final major impact on? And how do you make the changes around you? And when you are able to figure that out, write it down. Then write it, write it, word it out and rewrite it and rewrite it until, you know, you get it down to one or two sentences. It doesn't need to be this giant dissertation of, of, of who you are and what you are. It's not supposed to be your manifesto. It's supposed to just be a statement. So one, two sentences. And then when you do that, if you have a journal, write it on the inside cover of your journal. So that when you open it up, you can see it and you can read it aloud. Um, keep it, keep repeating it and saying it aloud until you actually have that memorized. 
And then as you keep working through life and you keep achieving your goals and going through and maintaining the missions that you're wanting to maintain and completing those, you'll see that you keep making little subtle corrections to get to that one point that where you're making the most outstanding impact in other people's lives for whatever, whatever your values are and because of your talents. So guys, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen. If you like this show, man, if I could ask you one huge favor, if this meant anything, if this particular episode meant anything to you, share it out. We, we can't grow unless, unless we start sharing the show out and start letting people know that, Hey, this, there's a show out here that is just, just helping men out tremendously. So if you know someone who this would affect or who someone who might benefit from this, share it to them. Go, you, all, all the different uh, pod catchers out there have a share button these days. If not, you can just go to send them to relaxmail.com uh, forward slash uh, 48. And there they can actually look up and uh, watch, uh, listen to the show through the web page. If you like the show and you're, this is your first episode and you like it and you want to get more automatically brought to your, to your podcast, uh, podcatcher of choice, then go to relaxedmail.com forward slash, uh, subscribe. And there's all the different ways and all your different podcatchers out there that will actually help that you can actually click on and subscribe in your show. Uh, the more people that listen, the more that gives me a gas in the tank and, and lets me know that I'm, I'm making an impact and I'm sharing with, uh, I'm, I'm able to help you men out there to become the best men possible. If you want to return a favor, uh, you can also go to relaxmail.com forward slash pod chaser. That's P O D C H A S E R pod chaser. And there, leave a rating and review on uh, the Podchaser site, and that would do me uh, do me great. Also, kind of gives me an, uh, an instance of being able to see how well I am doing, as opposed to uh, and as opposed to where I need to improve. So, with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let you go. Thank you again for listening, and we will see you next week. Till then, go make a statement. <laughs>